So we know that if we do things, if we have a client we like, and it's someone we'd like to have as a client for a long time, we might boldly say, you know what? We want to express our gratitude to these people. We want to send a gift. Maybe I want to use a gift to get in to meet with somebody. Maybe I want to use a gift to actually show appreciation for them. So we have this client who, man, these people are just great. We love these people. They're absolutely amazing. We appreciate them more than anything in the world. Now, I want some of you to throw, throw out a number for me. How much would you spend with a client, if you're just going out to dinner, or maybe taking them to a game or something like that, how much would you spend without even thinking about it? Like, man, if it hit this level, I wouldn't even think twice about it. What's the number, what's the number that you might comfortably spend without even thinking about it? What do you think? 250, right? So 250, I mean, if you went out to dinner with somebody who's 250, it wouldn't even raise an eyebrow, right? Piece of cake, right? Not a big deal. Some people might spend more, some people less. But what typically happens is we say, wow, you know what? We really love these people. They're great. I totally value our friendship. I value you as a customer. And so I want to give you something like this. I want to give you something like this. Or maybe, maybe I want to give you something else with our logo on it. Maybe it's something like this or this or, God forbid, this. Right? So that one there, my favorite, because if you're given that, it's basically saying, look, go to the competitor. This is not something you should ever give as a gift, but it's something that's advertised on promotional product pages. And, of course, when you send gifts to clients, how many of you tend to send gifts around the holidays? Show of hands. Okay, hold your hands up high. Everyone look around the room. What do you think the chance is that you're standing out by sending a gift around the holidays? You're not. So the, the guys who sponsor the book today um, is a company called The Ruling Group. And I tell this story whether they're sponsoring the book or not because it's just they're, they're great people. And when I explain the story, then you'll understand why. So they run programs around what's called executive appreciation. And the way I first discovered this is as a speaker, oftentimes I'll get different gifts. And most of the stuff um, I generously give to the concierge at the hotel, if you get my meaning. So you get something you're like, oh, great. <laughs> they go to the concierge and say, I want you to have this. And, um, and so, what, so, so John Rulin, um, who's the CEO of Ruling Group, John says, look, if you're giving a gift and it has your name on it, it's not a gift, it's marketing. And so over the years, there are three gifts that I received that I said, man, these really make a huge impact for me. And it really makes a big difference and stands out. And guess what? It didn't have the giver's name on it, but I remember these, and more importantly, so does my wife. So how do they do that? Well, in Giftology, it gives a whole formula for it, and we've got like 50 copies of that as well for people interested in it. But for starters, he says, don't give a gift around the holidays because that's what everybody does. I know you think that basket of food is really going to make a big impact, but it doesn't because think about where it goes in your office. It goes in a collection in the kitchen with all this other stuff, and no one knows who it came from. If you want to make a big impact, what John's team says is, look, you want to make sure you include their significant other. Because if you include their significant other with it, now it has a huge impact. So here are some of the gifts that I received. And the way I found the guys at Ruling Group was I'd received a bunch of different gifts. These three really stood out. So I called the first person and said, man, where did you get this? They're like, I have no idea. We just use these guys at Ruling Group. So OK. The second one, same conversation. The third one, same thing. So I'll show you pictures of what these things were that were pretty cool. So the first one is this thing called a Vinnebago. And it's shaped like a bottle of wine. And when this thing came, beautifully packaged, one black, one white. And you'll notice, if you can see in the picture, there are different initials on the cap of each one. The one on the left has my initials. The one on the right has DA, which is my wife's initials. So I came home. She said, look at this gift that, that, that we got. And I picked up the white one, and she said, put that down. That's mine. And I said, OK. Um, secretly, I can switch the caps. And she doesn't know, but like, shh, keep that between us. So that was the first thing. And it's one of these things that you know, keeps products cold, hot, whatever. 
forever. So I've, I've had like iced tea in this thing in my car. It's 120 degrees out. You come out, it's still ice cold. I don't know how they do it. It's that old thermos technology. There's an engineer in here who can explain it. I don't get it, but it's pretty cool. By the way, the lid, which is stainless steel, rather hot though. Um, I learned that once. So um, the second thing that I got was this. So it was these knives that were engraved with our names, not theirs. Now here's the funny part. My wife knows who these came from, and my wife will often ask, hey, you haven't talked to him in a while. What's going on with them? <laughs> right? So she's working on their behalf to make sure I'm doing business with this vendor. And the cool part is that these guys at Ruling Group, because now I've gotten to know John, they, don't let, they not only keep a database of what you've given, but they keep a database of all the recipients. So I'll say to somebody, oh, I'll say to John, look, I want to send this gift to Karen, and if Karen had received, you know, a, you know, whatever, a, a paring knife, and I want to send a paring knife, John's team would say, she's already got a paring knife. Because anybody that sends to that address, that person, they keep track of that, which I think is pretty cool. And then the last one, which really made a huge impression, because I'm a wine guy, is this wine opener. And it's made by this company in Australia. They hand forged this thing. And so the person who was, who was sending the gift called my wife and said, do you have something with a signature on it? My wife at first a little skeptical, like, is this like a bank fraud thing? <laughs> this, this doesn't sound like a good idea. And she was coerced into, uh, into sending this. And then we get this wine knife that actually has my autograph etched into the back of it. Now, as a wine guy, we've got many, many wine openers. This is the only one we use. And it doesn't have the giver's name on it. And every time I use it, I think of them. And every time we use it, my wife will say, hey, have you talked to Debbie in a while? I'm like, son of a gun. Right? Every time this stuff comes up, she asked about the person who gave it, even though it doesn't have their information on it. So it's one of those things where those sorts of surprises that you knew periodically, and you'll spend way less than you would have spent on a dinner or taken to a sporting event that they will forget about next week. But we don't think that way. We send that other stuff that the concierge now has to give away to somebody else. And that's the dilemma that they face. 